Your Honor. Gentlemen of the jury, all of us in this country, the South, have been taught from birth a few things which we hold above all else. Now, one of the first of these things is that only a life can pay for the life it takes. I know there's not a man on this jury or a man in Mississippi that in his heart can find my client, Bookwright, guilty for defending his daughter against a rascal like Buck Thorpe. And that's what I'm talking about. Not about the dead man, character, or the morality of the act he was engaged in. Not about self-defense, whether or not the defendant was justified to the point of taking life. But about all of us who are not dead, human beings who at the bottom just want to do right, human beings with all the complexities of human passion, instincts, beliefs, Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Yana. Court recessed until jury returns. <laughs> Don't you agree you had the pistol in his hand when they found him? Book thought deserves what he got. I tell you, I wouldn't have waited as long for Friday. He was not only no good, but dangerous. Right, right. <laughs> And if it hadn't been book right, someone sooner or later would have to kill it. Yes. Then what do you want? What do you want? I can't help it. I ain't gonna vote book right free. And so Jackson Fentry, cotton farmer, hung my jury. Who was he? I thought he'd farm one place all his life. But I discovered that 20 years ago, he left for a job. His neighbors told me. You see, that was my first case, and I had to find out why I lost it. Good luck to you, Fletcher. If any of us had known then what I know now, Jackson Fentry had never been on that jury. Oh. <laughs> 
Can I help you? I'm looking for Mr. Chet Russell. Well, he's not here right now. I'm his son, Isham. You the man my father hired as caretaker? Yes, sir. Come on, then. Last man we had left a month ago. Got too lonely for him. He was drunk half the time anyway. This is a sawmill. Men don't come out here till spring. Paul says you can stay on in the boiler room. He'll leave the mule out here so you can get to the store and back. Next year, if you still like it out here, we'll talk about building you a house. There's a stove there you can cook on. There's a well out there for water. We'll get you some dishes. If you need anything else, you come to the house and ask for me or Paul. Yes, sir. Hey, Merry Christmas, Ventry. Merry Christmas, I can. Paul wanted to know if you'd be going home for Christmas. I am. I'm leaving as soon as I can eat there. How far is your farm? 30 miles. How you gonna get there? I walked it. I'll be home before supper time. You won't come. Thank you. When will you be back? Day after Christmas. Do you ever get lonesome by yourself out here this way? Nope. You ever go hunting? I hunt some. Maybe when you come back, we go hunt together sometime.
Thank you. Lady. Oh, lady. Lady. Chet Russell saw me uh, over in Frenchman's Bend. I'm Jackson Fentry. I'm the watchman out here in the winter time when the mill shut down. I heard you when I come out the door of the boiler room. You sounded to me like you was in pain. How long you been here? I don't know. I remember walking down the hill back yonder. Uh, I know I was feeling dizzy. I said to myself, I hope I ain't gonna faint. But I guess I did. What day is it? It's the morning before Christmas. And I haven't been here too long. It wasn't light yet when I started out this way. I think I'd better be getting out of there. Let me help you. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I guess I'll have to rest a while longer. I haven't quite gotten my strength back yet. Well, let me help you in here so you can rest by my fire. So raw and cold out, too. Thank you. It has been a cold winter, hasn't it? Yes. <laughs> There's ice this morning early when I left the house. I seen it out in the ditches. Is that pest? Yes. I said to myself, Jack Frost has been here. He sure had. Can you make it? Yes, sir. I can make it. Thank you. It is nice and warm in here. I love a good fire in the stove. I could get it warmer. But letting it die out cost us about to leave my papa's farm for Christmas. Don't go to no trouble for me. 
I can't stay for more than a minute. Just to get my strength back and to get some of the coldness out of my bones. Thank you. Can I get you anything to eat? No, thank you. You think I'd be hungry, wouldn't you? Carrying a baby and all, but I don't have no appetite. You live here all by yourself? Yes. Mr. Chet Russell's going to build me a house next spring to live in, but he told me to stay on out here for the time being. Warm and dry, it does for me. Have you been here long? No. I raised 30 miles from here on a cotton farm. I work with my daddy. My mom's dead. My daddy's on the farm all alone now. You from around here? I saw it up. Off and on, that is. My husband never cared much for this county, and he's always trying to find work away from here, but... We always had to come back. You on your way home now? No. No, sir. Was you going to the store at Frenchman's Bend? If you was, you sit right here. I'll go get whatever it was you wanted. Oh, no, no, sir. I, I wasn't going to no store. You going into Jefferson? No. No, sir, I wasn't going no place. I was just going. Just going. Your husband dead. No, sir. He just disappeared about three months ago when he first heard about the baby coming. Don't you have any people? I got Papa. Three brothers. Can't you go home to them? No, sir. They asked me to leave and never come back after I married my husband. I don't intend ever to go back again. My papa, he's got his pride. I got mine, too. a whole lot for the winter time to use? No, ma'am. I always get sick every winter time, it seems like to me. A woman came over to where I was staying. She said, you look poorly. You ought to get a doctor. I said, there ain't nothing wrong with me that sunshine couldn't fix, I said. You want me to put some more wood on the fire? No, it's just fine. I love sunshine. When I started out this morning, I said I'm going, if my strength holds out, till I come to where it's warm and the sun is shining. The strength didn't hold out very long.
listen to that wind. I love to hear it when I'm inside and warm. Ooh. Ooh, that wind was cold, though. Walking right into it the way I had to. This does feel good, Mr. Fendry, Jackson Fendry. And you're Mrs. Eubanks, Sarah Eubanks. I was a Thorpe, but I married the Eubanks. If I have a girl, I'm gonna name her Vesta after my mama. And if I have a boy, I wanted him named. Well, I don't know now. I was going to name him after my husband, but. I don't know now. Listen to that wind whipping around outside again. Sounds right friendly, don't it? On the inside, warm this way. You're listening to it. When I was a little girl at 10, my mama died. They say I got everything mixed up that year because I grieved so. And I'd wake all winter long. When the wind would blow around the house, I think it was my mama calling. I'd answer and call back to her. I'd ask her where she was hiding. I never grieved no more after that. When I got over that, I vowed nothing would break my heart ever again. And it didn't for the longest kind of time. 